Hey Video School Online, did you know that I'm launching a brand new YouTube channel called Video School Online Tech? It's only about video and photo gear reviews, unboxings, and tutorials. This is a preview of that channel. I'm sharing a video of Will who is comparing the Movi M10 to the Movi M15. It's a professional steady cam system. Enjoy this video and if you do like it, please consider subscribing to that channel, Video School Online Tech. There will be links below in the description because after this week, I won't be posting the VSO Tech videos onto this channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy. If you don't know what the Movi is, the Movi is a gimbal um, steady system. So you can see here, this is the M10. Um, we have an A7 on there. And you can see if I just shake it and move it around and stuff like that, it stays perfectly steady for those gimbal shots. Very popular. The gimbals uh, also that are made are the DJI Ronin, which is a little bit more um, popular with um, cheaper, cheaper cost associated with it. So these are the Movies. I'm not going to get totally deep into what they actually do and, and com compare and contrast, but really it's more M10 versus M15. So the M10 is weighted at, Freefly says, 10 pounds. So it's really rated for a smaller sort of camera. It's not as small as the M5, which is even smaller than the M10, um, which is really what you're going to be running a, an A7 or a DSLR on more often than not. But because we use the F5, which this is being shot on right now, we have the M15. So really quick, on the M10 I have the A7, um, which is kind of our run and gun machine. This is a one man band. Um, we really like the A7 on the M10, mostly because the autofocus on the um, 16 to 35 Sony E-mount lens um, is fantastic if you're just run one man banding it. And you can see here, it's got kind of a smaller, a smaller berth than the M15. Uh, um, the A7 fits on it perfectly. Um, it's really great for when I run a gun. We have a small, um, small HD 502 monitor up here running through HDMI. Um, and it's really light, carbon fiber uh, M10, uh, much lighter than the Ronin. Uh, the Ronin is heavy. Um, we have run uh, a red camera on here. We run a C300, we run a C100. Those are the bigger cameras that we can run on this rig. But really, it's, it's, it's fantastic for DSLR or for mirrorless. Um, you can hook up uh, a remote follow focus as a Bartek single channel digital, um, you can see here, and then you can run it to a thumb wheel or have a first pulling focus. But really, it's, it's really nice to just have this running and gun. We've done a lots of sports stuff with Nike and uh, some other stuff, some internal work where we're just running and gunning. The M15 is a little bit bigger. You can see it already has a crossbar up here, which you can put on the M10 if you like. They're all customizable. It's still carbon fiber, um, but you can put a lot more accoutrement on it. The reason I don't have anything on here is because typically we don't put small cameras on here. We put the F5 on here, and it's really cool is that we run the power for the F5 from Movi FreeFly batteries themselves. And you can see on the M15, there's two cradles for uh, Movi batteries that you have here, whereas on the M10 there's only one cradle uh, which powers the Movi itself. So one can be powering the Movi, one can be powering the camera if you so desire. Otherwise, you can be using one to be powering a Teradek up here, which is for wireless video, um, and we would run our same monitor up here, one for the operator, one going to pull focus. So you can run the Teradek or you can run down to a follow focus, and we use, again, the Bartek here, would hook into a lens on the F5 or a RED or any really bigger camera uh, and get up to 15 pounds. Hey, hate to interrupt this video, but I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, stop right now, click on the link below to subscribe to Video School Online Tech. Thanks, and I'll let you get on with this video. Um, another way uh, that we would do with the follow focus would, right here we have the Red Rock uh, thumb wheel and this hooks into the receiver where you can pull focus yourself right here. It's very easy, very quick. Sometimes we put that on here more often than not because this is more of a one-man band thing. Um, the M15 is set up for that right now. So really you can see the difference in the M10 and the M15. The M15 is really meant for a bigger camera. More stuff, more wireless, more of that. It also comes with this cradle right here that sits on a stand versus a run and gun kind of little tiny cradle. The clearance level for this is just a little too low for the stand that they currently make. Um, I think they're probably coming out with a new one actually um, for the M15. So the, another big difference with the M15 that the M10 doesn't have is this toad in the hole where you can pop this off and this comes off completely like that. It's very easy and then this now can become a remote head uh, for, uh, you, you know, a remote head gimbal 
on a jib or on anything else or on the top of a car. You can use it upside down. The M10 does not do this um, without a separate attachment. So another um, big difference um, you can sell here, I'm gonna get up for a sec out of frame. You can see uh, right here the M10 has one bar coming across. So you have to worry about this balance right here. Um, whereas on the M15, it's got two bars that are coming across the top. We don't have a camera on here right now, but you can see that there's two bars coming across. So that takes out one of those balance modes, which is uh, a lot more helpful when you're balancing out uh, your rig or your camera. The cool thing, other than that, uh, the cool thing about it is that they're both carbon fiber. You can still use a tablet to tap into both. They're both Bluetooth. Um, the motors on the M15, I'd say are a little stronger in use. Um, it might be because it's newer for us. And uh, really you can tap into anything else. So the M10 actually came with a remote uh, and we've actually moved the remote over to the M15. It was seamless almost. You just unplugged it on there and stuck it over here. And the same remote works as a remote gimbal for the M15. So recently, Freefly has dropped the price of most of their gimbals. Uh, the M15 comes in around 9,000, the M10 comes in around 5,000, and the M5, which is again the smaller unit, comes in around 2,500. You can really tell that they're, they've got these three levels, and if you're really like kind of starting out and getting going and you're shooting mirrorless, the M5 is for sure the way to go. Um, it'll up your production value um, by far. If you're shooting with bigger cameras, look into the M10 and the M15. Bigger, bigger units, if you're starting to do wireless and more stuff, the M15 just has more space. Uh, it's deeper too, um, which will let you use bigger cameras versus the M10. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I would really tote these uh, over Ronin. Ronins are just heavy, 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 and they're a little more plug and play. These have a little more uh, customizable um, bars and whatnot. So um, yeah, that's it. So that's the big difference between the M10 and the M15. Um, if you'd like to learn more and dive into how to operate a gimbal and the free fly gimbals in particular, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to see if you guys are interested and put a whole course together for you on that. Also, check out the links below. Um, we work with Video School Online for tons of classes and content. Just check out videoschoolonline.com where we have a big master cinematography class along with a bunch of other photography and, and other videography um, courses. So check us out online and thanks for watching.